This is a continuous glucose monitor and I've been wearing it for three months, well, 30 days across three months. I've been wearing it to better understand my blood sugar as it relates to my sleep, exercise, food, and I've learned a lot. If you've been curious to learn more about continuous glucose monitors, if you're considering getting one yourself, then this is definitely the video for you. Let's get started. Hey guys, it's Robin and welcome back to the Science of Self-Care. On this channel, we talk about health science, we talk about life philosophy, and we do a whole lot of self-care experimentation. I am so excited for today's video. We are gonna talk all things continuous glucose monitors, also known as CGMs. I have been wearing one for the past three months. I'm now in my fourth month and I've been doing it 10 days each month. We're gonna talk about what this device does, why you might use it, then I'm gonna share some learnings from my personal experience, and then I'm gonna talk about who I think this device is perfect for. So what is a continuous glucose monitor? A CGM is a device that you typically insert into your arm that essentially has a little tiny filament in it that goes into your skin and measures your interstitial glucose levels. This means that this little filament is sensing how much sugar is in the fluids that are surrounding your cells. So it's not going all the way to the blood. It's not actually measuring your blood sugar, but our interstitial glucose level is a pretty good representation of our blood sugar. So essentially it's a proxy to know what your blood sugar is. It sounds kind of scary to have something in your body, but it's actually quite simple. You attach this little plastic applicator, you push down the button and really fast a tiny little needle will insert the filament and then the needle comes right out. You don't even really feel it. This filament is a lot more flexible than an actual needle in your body and so it allows you to move around and it moves with your skin. It's really not painful at all. Why might someone want to measure their blood sugar? Our blood sugar is a reflection of our overall metabolic health, but it also greatly impacts how we feel day to day, our energy, our mood. By tracking our blood sugar over time, we can learn which lifestyle habits support our stable blood sugar and help keep our blood sugar in a healthy range. I personally have been really interested in learning about this because I struggle most with actually low blood sugar and something called postprandial hyperglycemia, which is where your blood sugar plummets after eating, which is kind of the opposite of what you want. These devices are typically used by people with diabetes, but in recent years, medical professionals have started to learn how important blood sugar is and how it's really a biomarker that represents so many different things about our health. For example, blood sugar can tell us about our metabolic health, our potential disease risk. It's helpful to have blood sugar that stays in a healthy range and is quite stable. So by having a little monitor on your body, you're able to understand which lifestyle habits are supporting this and which lifestyle habits maybe aren't supporting stable blood sugar or are causing your blood sugar to drop or spike way too much. I wanna share a personal anecdote that perfectly exemplifies how powerful a CGM can be. So in the first week of using this device, I slept over at my sister's house and I slept very poorly because I was sleeping on her couch. The next day, we actually went for a lovely walk and you guys know how much I love walking, but I was not feeling good. I was feeling frustrated and emotional and I actually burst out crying spontaneously and it was pretty crazy. I felt like I didn't know why. I just felt really bad. And then my phone started beeping, beep, 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 beep. And that alarm was actually my phone telling me that according to my CGM, my blood sugar had dropped really low. Even though I wasn't hungry, I decided to eat a little bit, have a meal with my sister, and I felt so much better afterwards. It was a very insightful moment because I felt like in that emotional moment that there was something psychologically going on with me when really it was so much more of a physiological imbalance. My blood sugar literally was just low. I was hangry. I needed to refuel. I'm very interested in this type of stuff because I personally believe that half the time when I'm emotional, feeling down, it's not even a psychological thing, it's a physiological thing, whether that has to do with not getting enough nutrients, not getting enough food, my vitamins and minerals being off. So I love that this device is helping me understand which foods and which meals and which eating patterns, which sleeping patterns, etc., are gonna make me feel my best you know, physically and psychologically. So now I wanna share some key insights that I've learned by playing around with this. And after that, we're gonna do a little experiment where I'm gonna eat different breakfasts and show you live the impact 
of different types of breakfasts on my blood sugar. So key insight number one, this device has taught me how impactful my sleep quality is on my blood sugar regulation. On the nights where I do not get good sleep, my blood sugar is all over the place. It is spiking, it is dropping, and it's almost like I cannot handle carbohydrates and sugars as well when I don't sleep. So on days where I've just not been able to sleep well or for whatever reason haven't been able to get enough sleep, I am hyper vigilant about eating very balanced meals and not just eating random little carby things. Not even just a banana. A banana alone is not a balanced snack. I want some protein. I want some fiber. I want some fat in there. It's been so insightful to better understand the relationship between my sleep and my blood sugar. Another thing that I've learned from this experience, protein preloading is a really helpful habit for helping me manage my blood sugar. Now I've talked about protein preloading in the past because I've been doing it for years, but basically protein preloading is the idea of eating a portion of protein before you eat your actual meal. And I especially practice this around breakfast time because breakfast is the first meal of the day. I really wanna start off with blood sugar balance, whether that's a little bit of smoked salmon, you can do tofu, you can do chicken, you can do egg. The idea is just eat protein and then I have my breakfast. That's a protein preload. This is a practice I read about many years ago in different scientific studies. It's commonly used for people with diabetes to help manage their blood sugar. And from my own personal experience, I've intuitively started to to incorporate this into my routine because it just makes me feel so good, makes me feel satiated and energized throughout the morning and into the afternoon when I do this for breakfast. But now by having this actual CGM telling me what's going on, I'm able to put numbers to these intuitive practices that I've been doing. Let's go test this on the glucose cam right now. Let's do two days of a breakfast, one with a protein preload and one without. Let's go. Good morning and welcome to the glucose cam. This morning we are gonna have a protein preloaded breakfast and we're gonna observe what that does to blood sugar. And then tomorrow we're gonna have the same breakfast, oatmeal, but without the protein preload. This morning my blood sugar is really stable. I went for a little bit of a walk, which I usually do before breakfast. So now that I've had my morning walk, let us make some breakfast. So this is about 100 grams of smoked salmon and to look up how many grams of protein this is. I never track my meals, by the way, but this is a good serving of smoked salmon that I'm gonna have before the oatmeal. It's literally so good. Now I'm gonna wait a little bit just to see where my glucose is after this protein preload. So I just checked my blood sugar levels and it's at 87, which is pretty much the same as it was after my walk. So there's really no spike with this protein preload of a nice fatty piece of smoked salmon. Now we are gonna eat some oatmeal. So here we have blueberries over chocolate protein oats with a few golden raisins. There is protein powder in this oatmeal, but I added enough carbs, as you can see, that it will definitely spike my blood sugar and we can compare it. And you might be wondering, why would you eat carbs if it's just gonna spike your blood sugar? Well, blood sugar spike is not necessarily bad. And honestly, if I don't eat carbs for long periods, my blood sugar will start to rise anyways. It's kind of a form of stress for my body. I need carbohydrates to feel good, full, and to function. My total blood sugar actually stays more stable when I eat little bits of carbs, especially something like oatmeal with protein powder. It's a high quality source of carbohydrates. To be honest, I'm already getting quite full, which is another helpful part of eating protein first. It's really satiating. For the sake of this experiment, we will power through. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, let's uh, observe what my blood sugar does now. I honestly feel very good. The protein preload makes such a difference. This is very random, but one thing I've noticed is that after I eat carbohydrates in the morning, my the puffiness in my face, you know, I usually wake up with a little bit of puffiness in my face, that completely goes away. And it's something to do with my electrolyte balance, my hormones that, that come after eating carbs, but 
It's just something I've noticed and I'm curious if anyone else has noticed that or if it's just me and if you guys have any thoughts. So it's been a few minutes since I finished my oats and my blood sugar is now at 94 milligrams per deciliter. It is still not a major spike, so I'm, I'm waiting for the, the food to go in and for everything to digest, but I wouldn't be surprised if the spike is quite minimal compared to tomorrow. So I just checked my blood sugar and it's only at 98, not even a real spike. It's not past 100 and it's just incredible. I feel so good. I feel satiated and I really feel like protein preloading is the best way to breakfast. But let's see tomorrow. I'm going to have the same oatmeal without the salmon protein preload. Good morning. This morning my blood sugar is a little bit higher than yesterday just starting off. It's around 90. So I think I'll pay more attention to the difference rather than the absolute value. So let's go. I'm also very tired this morning, which might also be influencing my blood sugar, but this is life. This is not a laboratory. Let's go eat some breakfast. <laughs> I'm really sad that I don't get to eat smoked salmon before oats this morning. Another day. Another bowl of chocolate oats with a shit ton of blueberries. Mm. Okay, this is still good. So now let us see. Let's see what happens to my blood sugar. So I just started feeling not so great and it's only been 45 minutes since I had breakfast, but I checked my blood sugar and it's at 138. It's so much higher than yesterday. I don't feel great. I feel tired. I feel a little bit like um, my vision is even blurry sometimes when I eat too many carbs at once. And it's just mind blowing how much more of a spike this is. I'm going to see how high it rises. Maybe it won't rise further, but yeah. Protein preload seems to really work for my body and it's so cool that this CGM gives me insight into these numbers that I would otherwise just kind of intuitively be guessing about. Definitely recommend trying protein okay, preloading. Another key takeaway from this whole experience is the power of walking and how that is really helpful for managing my blood sugar. Again, this is all based on my personal tracking, but I think a lot of these principles are gonna be true for most people. There's also literature to support these different principles, but walking is known to help us regulate our blood sugar. And I've noticed on days where I'm walking around a city, my blood sugar is super stable. It doesn't drop or spike too much and it just feels good. But again, it's so cool to have the numbers to back up both the research and these intuitive things that I've been doing just because it feels good. So to summarize, three key takeaways for me personally have been that my sleep quality really impact my blood sugar regulation. Protein preloading really helps me balance the glycemic impact of my meals and thus also balance my blood sugar. And lastly, walking is a great tool to keep my blood sugar balanced and stable throughout the day. All of these different habits have intuitively been a part of my life, but now I've seen the impact on my actual blood sugar. Because when our blood sugar is stable, we are going to feel good. We are going to feel energized. I think this tool is for anyone who's not a complete health and wellness newbie, someone who's already investing in their health, but who wants to deepen their understanding of how their different lifestyle habits and different meal choices affect their body. So I think this is going to be too overwhelming for anyone who's just starting out on their health and wellness journey. But if you are already committed to really eating well and tracking things in your life, I think this tool can really ramp up your self-learning and help you develop a science-based intuition about your body. By getting this constant and immediate feedback through the CGM, it becomes even easier to understand what different states feel like, what it feels like to have low blood sugar, what it feels like to have high blood sugar. And it also helps helps us understand which lifestyle habits support our stable blood sugar, especially meals, so that going forward, we can just intuitively know what's gonna work for us. So for people who don't have diabetes, this is not a tool you need to be using for the rest of your life, but just a few months of using this can already help you better understand your body and get a lot of insights around food because 
how I process certain things and my glycemic response to certain meals is going to be different than yours. We are also different. Our genetics are different. Our microbiome is different. So the way that we process carbohydrates in different foods also can vary person to person, which is why one person might be able to eat a bowl of rice and feel super energized and amazing, and another person eats a bowl of rice and feels like they have a crazy blood sugar spike and crash. It's all dependent on the unique context of our body. So I think this is an incredible tool to really ramp up your own self-discovery around your body and what works for it. Typically, CGMs are available to people with diabetes and a prescription for a CGM. If you don't have diabetes and don't have a prescription, there is a way to get it, which is how I got it. And that is through a company like Levels. So what Levels does is that it facilitates access to a CGM for people without diabetes and full transparency levels is the company that has been supplying my CGMs I've been testing these for free but I'm going to give you my complete honest thoughts about the levels app and the whole experience as always this is a non-sponsored completely honest review of my experience you typically need a prescription to get a CGM but there's a bit of a loophole that you can also get CGMs if you are part of a scientific study all the data that's being collected about my blood sugar is contributing to scientific research. And I think that is so cool. I love the fact that I'm now able to access CGMs and I'm able to contribute to blood sugar research in non-diabetic people. This is really under-researched and I think it's going to have a huge impact on health. And I also really like that they allow you to book lab tests through their app through LabCorp, which I have done in the past outside of levels. For about a hundred bucks, I've got different blood panels just to kind of check on my vitamin and mineral levels. They make it extra easy to do that as well. So this is not connected to a doctor, you can just book a lab test across the United States. I don't think you can do it outside of the United States. I'll have to check on that, but you can just book a lab test to get a blood panel on your hormones or on your vitamins and minerals. And these are just good things to do kind of consistently to kind of see what the state of your biochemistry is. So now a few thoughts on levels that are maybe less positive. I think the app itself is a little convoluted. I had the same complaint with the Lumen app. Usually a company wants to be your one-stop shop for health, so they have different journaling tools and different food log tools and all of these tools that I don't actually need or use. I'm there for my blood sugar and nothing else. I found myself actually using the Dexcom app more than the Levels app just because I thought it was so simple and easy to read. Now, one thing that the Levels app is really convenient for is that it stores all your information. The Dexcom app just shows you your blood sugar for the past three days or even maybe a week, but it's not going to store your information across different devices. And again, you need to change out your device every 10 days. So even as you switch devices, Levels will keep all that information for you. And I think that's a huge plus. All in all, this is my favorite self tracking device I've ever used because I feel like blood sugar is just such a fundamental biomarker for health that it kind of dictates everything else. It dictates how we feel, it dictates our sleep quality, and our sleep quality also impacts our blood sugar, so it's kind of like a little vicious cycle, but it's been incredible to, at any moment, be able to check exactly what my blood sugar is and think about how it's gotten to that point. I feel so much more confident in making a lot of lifestyle choices now, like food choices, like sleep choices, just based on my knowledge that I've gained over the past several months with my blood sugar. So it really helps build that self-trust and that science-based intuition about what your body needs, what it's doing at any given moment, and how to construct your perfect lifestyle that's going to support you and help you feel your best on a day-to-day -day basis. I would love to know if you've used a CGM. Are you interested in using a CGM? Is it something that sounds a bit scary or too much? I always really love the conversations we have in the comments. Enough rambling for me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.